So what we're going to do today is we're going to take our guy that we've been animating here and we're going to make him uh, run across the screen. We're going to do this the easy way, not the hard way. The hard way would be literally take each frame and move him over a little bit every time. Um, the problem with that is it gets very difficult to adjust things like um, speed. You know, if you want him to go a certain length or a certain speed across the frame, it also gets really hard to adjust him scale-wise. Like we might just have one smaller or bigger or whatever. So what we're going to do, whoops, I've already <coughs> got one here. We're going to um, delete that, pretend that wasn't there. Uh, we're going to put him inside a symbol. And uh, a symbol is basically like a container. And one of the things that you've already probably noticed is whenever we test an animation in Flash is that it loops. See, it just keeps playing over and over and over again. We're going to use that to our advantage uh, inside the symbol because Flash actually has a very special property, and that is that it loops inside the symbols as well. What is a symbol, you might ask? Well, symbol is actually really simple. A symbol is basically a container. Um, basically, it's like a... a <coughs> It's like an animation, uh, a whole separate project almost that can contain other animations, can contain objects, that sort of thing. Now the difficult part is actually getting him into the symbol. And there's a really easy way of doing it. Um, but it, it takes a little bit of figuring out to do. If I just take this and just like highlight him and right click and create a symbol, then look at that, it's right there in a the menu. Well once I do that, I'll call this guy Runner. What you might notice is, if I double click inside the symbol here to see, I've only got my first frame. How do I get all the other frames into this symbol? Well, the easiest way is to actually not do what I just did there. So I'll undo my convert to symbol. <coughs> and you can see in the library it's gone. But the best way is actually just to create an empty symbol. So we're going to just going to create an empty symbol and we're going to call that runner. Okay, right there. And you notice there's nothing there. Now let's get back out of that. We're going to go right here. See, it, can, it tells us we're inside a symbol. We're going to click back on scene one to get out of the symbol. Okay, And now you can see that we're back to our regular animation. And I'm just going to click and drag here and highlight all the frames for my runner. And I'm going to right click and I can say copy frames. Once that's copied, then I'm going to go back over to my library here and I'm going to double click on the symbol runner. Now once I do that, you'll notice we're in an empty symbol. There's nothing there. But if we go back up to the timeline, we right click and we hit paste frames. Now what happens is it pastes all those frames inside our symbol. So now let's get back out of the symbol and go back to, to scene one. The symbol is currently only existing in the library. <coughs> it doesn't exist in our animation yet. So what we need to do is delete our current runner, okay, layer, and we want to add this symbol. However, I recommend, instead of deleting this layer, let's just turn it off for the time being and lock it. We're going to make a new layer, and let's drag our runner down <coughs> in here. So now we've got our symbol. This has got our runner in it. And uh, <coughs> if I slide the uh, time back and forth in the timeline, if I scrub the timeline, you'll see that there's no animation. However, if I test the animation, you can see, oh look, I've got two runners. Now this shows two in interesting properties of Flash. One is that when you build an animation, just because you've turned off a layer does not mean that it won't show up. So what we're going to do now is we know that the other runner is working because I had two there. We're going to trash this layer by just going right here to the little trash can. And goodbye, Mr. Runner. Let's test that again and just make sure I didn't make a mistake. I didn't make a mistake. Perfect. So I've got my runner in a symbol. The second principle that this illustrates is that the animation that's inside the symbol will, <coughs> will, um, uh, will keep running or runs on its own, uh, separate from the animation that you might have um, outside. What this allows us to do is actually something really cool. First off, if I just want to make him smaller, I can just take my free transform tool and I can make him smaller. If I want to rotate him just a touch, I can do that. And what's really cool is the animation will continue to run inside that container and all the modifications that I've made to the container outside here will stay. So we're going to uh, check this out, see? Look at that. He's slightly tilted. And he, which makes him look like he's running a little faster. And you'll see that it just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. 
The other thing that's kind of neat about this is that if we take a look inside our symbol, the animation is the same length of time, 24 frames, as our uh, outside animation in the scene. But what we can do is we can actually extend this. So let's extend this to about, let's, I don't know, say 72 frames. So I'm going to make it three seconds long. So I'm just going to insert frame on both layers. You got to do that. If you don't do that on both layers, if you only do that on the runner layer, um, then the ground will disappear. So I'm going to call it runner. <coughs> now, there's another neat property that Flash can do, and that is called tweens. So here you see up in my timeline, I've got a keyframe for this guy. So what we're going to do is we're going to put him right off the frame here, outside of the stage. And now, as we bring him forward, <coughs> we're going to go back over here, and we can set another keyframe for him to go over to the right. But before we do that, we're going to add what we call tween. And a tween is basically a computer program that's going to do the motions for you. So uh, I hate to say this, but all that work you did here inside the symbol uh, isn't always necessary. <clears throat> now, in this case, the way we were doing the runner, it was necessary. But to make him slide side to side, I could go frame by frame if I wanted to. But I'm not going to do that. We're going to add a tween. And by adding a tween, it's going to help us go a lot faster, uh, do the animation a lot faster. So we're going to create the motion tween here. And you can see nothing's happening because I haven't set a second keyframe. And the keyframe is a set of position. So notice I take my time. And I go all the way to the end of the, uh, of the uh, timeline here. And then as I drag him to the right, I'm going to hold the shift key down so that he stays in line. <coughs> and then notice now, all of a sudden, we have a new keyframe here. And then we have this dotted line right here that represents the path of our runner. That's what we call a motion path. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So now he's actually moving. Now what's interesting is Flash is not showing us both animations. It's only showing us the tween animation that's in scene one. But the magic happens when I hit command return and I build this animation and preview it. Now what's neat is we can start to adjust the speed of what's happening here. But the big thing that I want you to see is <clears throat> look at the numbers of my frames here. <clears throat> Flash is looping this guy over and over and over and over and over again so that if the length of the animation inside the symbol does not match the length of the animation out on the scene, the animation inside the symbol is just going to keep on running. Now you can tell it to stop. You can put code in there and tell it to stop. There's actually like action script is a code that uh, Flash uses and we can just tell it to stop. But we don't want it to stop. We want it to, to continue. So, oh, and Flash is now thinking <clears throat> again. Um, and it's frozen. But anyway, so we, we don't want it to stop. We're going to let it continue doing what it's doing. Um, and, uh, and just continue um, looping. That is uh, very advantageous for us because it allows us to build shorter animations that we know need to keep going inside a symbol and then longer animations as he's running sideways. It keep, basically keeps us from having to do more than one run cycle. So, if, you know, if I go into this into the symbol here, I've only got one run cycle, okay? If I were to just have him run for 72 seconds and I just had this outside of a symbol like we did at the beginning of this demo, I'd have to copy and paste those frames over and over and over and over again. Well, that's, that's you know, that's kind of silly. I can take advantage of the fact that Flash loops at the animation, and, which I have done here, and then my life is, is just a lot easier. So that's essentially what we're going to do. I want you to take your guy, put him into a symbol, which is a container. I want you to take that container uh, and put a motion tween on its animation. And then I want you to set him off screen. And then I want you to set him on screen, you know, across the screen in the second place. So you have two keyframes. And then what's going to happen is the run animation that you've been building is going to loop inside the symbol. And the motion tween is going to slide him across the frame. And we're going to have a great uh, animation. And hopefully that all makes sense.